Hello everyone. Today, we're doing a short video. It's something I've been thinking about recently and wanted to make into a video. So let's jump right in. Humans, by this I mean our species, Homo sapiens, evolved in Africa upwards of 350,000 years ago. We have both fossil and genetic evidence that humans evolved in Africa and then migrated out of Africa over 170,000 years ago. For fossils, the oldest humans consistently come from Africa. All human fossils outside of Africa are younger than the oldest African fossils. See the 2017 paper, New Fossils from Jebel Iyoud, Morocco, and the Pan-African Origin of Homo Sapiens, and the 2018 paper, The Earliest Modern Humans Outside Africa, for examples. And for genetics, both nuclear and mitochondrial DNA point to an African origin for humans. The highest diversity of nuclear and mitochondrial DNA variations are in Africa, and African populations are paraphyletic to the other human populations. The variation argument is important because it indicates that the farther you go out from the original population, the fewer variations there are going to be. The reason is that founder populations tend to be very reduced in alleles compared to the original population simply as a result of having fewer individuals. On the other hand, the point about African populations being paraphyletic means that the other human populations nest within an African lineage. Again, demonstrating that all non-Africans have African ancestry. Together, this means there is virtually incontrovertible evidence for a human origin in Africa. But some people are not convinced by this extremely powerful evidence and have tried to find ways to get around it. This creates a problem though. If you cast out the data and methodology used to reach these conclusions for humans, then you necessarily must cast out the data reached by the same methodology for other organisms. For example, there are several East African lakes that have been part of a major cichlid radiation, Kivu, Victoria, Malawi, and Tanganyika, among a few other smaller lakes. The greatest number of species occurs in Lake Victoria, however, the much smaller and geologically older Lake Kivu has relatively higher genetic diversity. This is interesting, because Lake Kivu has only 15 species of cichlid, while Lake Victoria has over 500, with some estimates going over 700. Genetic evidence indicates that the haplotypes, which are groups of alleles inherited from a single parent, of Lake Victoria cichlids are descended from the haplotypes of Lake Kivu cichlids. Furthermore, the much larger clade of Lake Victoria cichlids is monophyletic and sister to Lake Kivu endemic cichlids, such as Haplochromus gracilier. Remember, we're using the same exact line of argumentation to reach the conclusion that Lake Victoria cichlids are descended from Lake Kivu cichlids, that we are to reach the conclusion that humans originated in Africa. Much higher genetic diversity is in the original population, and the larger populations have genes that are nested within the smaller populations. If you want to argue that humans didn't originate in Africa, then you must also necessarily reject the conclusion that Lake Victoria cichlids are descended from Lake Kivu cichlids. But it gets much worse because now you've wrecked the entire field of biogeography. If we can't trust fossils or genetics to accurately recount the dispersal of different organisms, then what can we trust? That means we can't conclude that the Galapagos tanagers are descended from Central and South American tanagers, that lemurs are descended from African primates, Tasmanian marsupials are descended from Australian marsupials, etc. The fact is that these are useful and accurate methods for determining the dispersal of various organisms, and the naysayers have no real objections or replacements for these methods. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.